you should have left that game, which should have, again, been uh, a nice six, six, three game or something like that. Being like, all right, like we're getting, we're rounding into form. A lot of these guys that need to pull their weight when you get into the playoffs, they're playing at a high level right now. Instead, you got this one where it's like, yeah, guys did well, but like this overarching looming threat. It's like the moon coming down in like that Zelda game. It's like you can't ignore it because it's the biggest thing that's going to mess everything up. And welcome into the Bruins Beat on CLNS Media, presented by our good friends over at Prize Picks. Use that code CLNS to get up to a hundred bucks back uh, on uh, any deposit up to a hundred dollars. It's a hell of a deal, and it's very fun uh, for Bruins games. It's great. I mean, you can pick, you know, more or less shots on goal uh, for David Pasternak, goals, assists, points, saves, everything. Right? It makes the game more fun. Everything, uh, Evan. Yes, and uh, so make sure to go over to our friends over at Prize Picks and do that. That's Connor Ryan. I'm Evan Marinovsky. Connor, what is up? Evan, I'm doing well. How are you doing after a long weekend of high school hockey? I'm doing well. It's uh, It was a long weekend, you're correct, and it was all Sunday because the MIAA does uh, six games on Sunday. Thankfully, uh, Patrick Donnelly and I split it. Last year, I went to all six. So I was there from like 8.45 in the morning until about 11.30, 12. Uh, This year we split. Pat did the first three. uh, I did the second three. But the best part of the day was the first game went to three overtimes. Um, So that set the whole day back. The final game of the day didn't start until about 9.30. That game was supposed to start at 7.30, I think, or 7. uh, Two and a half hours later. Not great, um, but definitely good stuff. Uh, the big story, though, and it does have a Bruins tie-in, is Jim Montgomery's son, JP, and Winchester were screwed. <laughs> I mean, screwed. Um, for those who don't know, haven't seen it, um, St. John's Prep scored a goal at the buzzer, um, but it was clearly after the buzzer. Uh, yeah, had gone the green light was on. The video, yeah. the video, there's multiple, this isn't like the Zabruder film. There's multiple cameras with multiple HD quality angles. All showing the puck like still on the stick with the green light on. Yes. And, uh, you know, when I first saw it, um, I was next to Tom Muller of the, of the Herald. And I was like, I, why are they celebrating? That went in after the, like, I think I saw the green light go before that puck went in or at least check it. And credit to St. John's Prep for just being like, there's only one chance you get to celebrate a buzzer beater winning goal yeah, to true. win the state final. Like, go for it, you know? Um, but what's wild is the MIA does not use video replay at all, which makes sense for games at Loring Arena and Framingham and Zapustis and Brain Tra- and these regular rinks. Does not make a lot of sense when you're at TD Garden and you have a thousand cameras. I'm not even saying like cell phone cameras. Um, you have cameras built into Overhead. the building. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, they use the they use all those cameras on the on the Garden HDX, the Jumbotron throughout all six games to show replays of like every play. And it's just fascinating to me that to decide a state final, they don't say, Hey, you know what? We're going to look at this real quick. No one would be mad at that. St. John's prep couldn't be mad at it because it didn't go in (laughs) until after the buzzer. Um, So I was, uh, I was floored by it. It's heartbreaking for Winchester. So tough all around. I mean, it stinks for St. John's prep too. Right, yeah, exactly. Even, like, again, you can make the argument that this team goes on and wins an OT if it gets to that, what have you, but still, like, to now just have that kind of hovering over it again, banners fly forever, so I'm sure St. John's Prep will be fine, but <laughs> it just sucks that it comes down to uh, a situation like that. And, of course, like, classic MIAA, you know, being like the the cop in the town, staring and just looking away, can't be bothered <laughs> to do reviews, you know, you... You write a, you know, the athletic director for a school writes something in, in print instead of cursive. The school is banned for five years for messing something up. But God forbid they look at a camera and, and be pushed to do that. God forbid the MIA is, is pushed to, to go the extra uh, inch to, to make sure a championship thing is is decided. But again, that's like MIA. Yeah, I, I, am, I was not shocked. Um, I was shocked that that happened but i you know when you really yeah. as you said when you pull away it's like well this isn't shocking that it happened to the miaa um at all but i just you know i feel for the winchester kids because again like that's an 11 seed they, they were a cinderella team public school 
Um, I, I see a lot of people being like, the MIA hates the publics. That's not this. What the story here is, is the MIA has a clear blind spot. Around, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they have problems with their rules. That's the biggest issue. It's not, I don't think this was anti Winchester or pro St. John's prep. Um, so yeah, but Jim Montgomery's son, a freshman JP, good defenseman for Winchester really got better throughout the year. Um, good puck mover. Very, very poised with the puck clearly comes from a, from that background, it'll be interesting to see what he does if he stays at Winchester, if he goes to a prep school next year. Um, so, um, good luck to him. I know I'll be seeing a lot of him um, over the next couple, you know, over the next year. Um, but unfortunate for Winchester, good for St. John's Prep. Um, I have, you know, I'm only, you know, I'm only 25. I have never seen a crazier ending, both in terms of missed call and and uh just ending in general i mean because it looked like oh we're heading to overtime and if we did if the game did head to overtime by the way that next game wouldn't have started until like 10 30 <laughs> yes of night. course so, so i mean just look at it though look at that though evan like again a lot of controversy in that but it could have been worse you could have been in still boston all day on sunday so Ooh, this is true i you know what's yeah that I'm very happy that wasn't the case. Uh, love you guys over in Southie, but that parade, dude. I uh, fled. I <laughs> flee the city on Sunday. It is every year, friggin' amateur hour. Get me oh, the hell out of here. It looks, it looks unfortunate. They're talking you know about what? moving it out of Southie. Do you hear about that? That'd be great. There's friggin' like broken glass all over every fucking sidewalk. So I, I'm, I hope they friggin' move it. I don't need people coming in from. Bringing like Mobblehead coming down here with their fake TikTok accents, making videos, and then spiking Yingling into my friggin' sidewalk. So I would I would love that, Evan, to be honest with you. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm I don't even live there. I've never been to that parade, but every time I see it on my friends like Snapchat and Instagram stories, I'm always like it sucks. Oh, I mean, people you know, no offense. Up, people throwing up shamrock shakes on the red oh. line trying to get that. I don't I don't need I don't need this, Evan. Shoot, I, get out of here. It, you know, I, I love my fellow Bostonians and I and I like St. Patrick's Day, but it that parade seems like the trashiest thing. Um, and I and I mean that in the best way. I can say that. I you know, I live here too. Um, but oh my god, sometimes seeing I'm like, man, Southie residents must not enjoy that, I would assume. No, <laughs> no, not at all. Evan, I don't like moving my car at like seven in the morning to move out of the way just to clear a path for a guy dressed as like Woody from friggin' Toy Story. They then get like a green Bud Light can thrown at his head, removing <laughs> his cowboy hat. Who wants that? Who wants no. that? I agree. I agree. I'm surprised it's still in. I know it's been there since like the early 1900s in South. I think 1901. Um, and it's been over 100 years. But uh, I can see why you're fed up. I can see why you guys are getting fed up with that. So, yeah, MIA day was a bit better. I thought the Boston Latin game at, at 730 or that last game would be like packed with drunk people because, you know, they you know, a lot of them stay in the city and stuff. Uh, what there were not that many people actually at that game. Granted, it started at 930, but still, I don't know if they I don't know if they made it to 930. Um, credit, to, credit to Boston Latin. Good, yes. Great run love have. Lo love Boston Latin. They did end up, they had the biggest upset of the day. Anyways, I know a lot of people are like, get to the brew and stuff, get to the brew and stuff. I feel that St. John's prep thing is huge. Um, so I, I feel We're talking to talk about it. We're talking hockey. We segued a little bit into how much I hate the parade, but it's topical. We're not talking about, hey, did you, did you, are you rewatching The Office? Are you rewatching The Sopranos? No, we're, yeah, we talking hockey, we're not talking that. Not, no, we're not talking yeah. that. We're not doing that. Um, Save the ship, Evan. Last, last I'm trying my best. Uh, night before the MIA finals, Bruins played the Flyers. Uh, uh, you know, honored James Van Reems day before the game uh, for a thousand games. Uh, the Bruins are responding to that by <laughs> healthy scratching him uh, on Tuesday night, uh, but that's okay. Um, close one with Philly. I saw the game was 5 2. I said, Oh, cool, you know, and you don't really, you know, it's just on in the background, whatever. I look up again and it's 5 4 and it's 6 5. And I'm like, How is this happening? Um, I think, you know, good to get a win. I know Montgomery kind of mentioned, uh, you know, Hey, we were good for the last 90 seconds. We, we held the lead. Um, I still think, you know, you get those goals. I, I know Don Sweeney's mentioned in the past that, um, you know, at the same time, as much as they can't sometimes hold leads, uh, they can't always, um, they have, they have, they struggle extending leads Well, you had an extended lead there. You also couldn't hold that. Uh, are you panicking about this? I mean, it's been a recurring theme all year. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's something that until you see it get corrected, I mean, I think it has to be a natural fear for this team, especially when they get to the playoffs. I mean, that game had all the makings of, you know, a nice lopsided win. You don't have to worry. You can ease your, your key players down the stretch. Like, there was that game, what was it, a few weekends ago against the, the Penguins? What was it, like 5-1? Yeah, How many times exactly we have like a, a nice? How many times we see a nice five-one, four-two game where they're like the other team's not pulling their goalie. You can just ride the wave towards a nice win. It doesn't happen. It, it stinks because like you have so many so many of those lapses in that third period where it's even tough to build off of all the positives you're getting down the other end of the ice. Right? You had Geeky score again. You had Heinen score a goal. You had DeBrus continuing to play at a high level. Zaka I think is really rounding into form over these last. Uh, five, six weeks, which is very encouraging. Like you have a lot on the offensive side of things that you're seeing. It's not just the usual suspects of the Pasternaks, the Martians, what have you. You should have left that game, which should have, again, been uh, a nice 6-3 six, six, game or something like that, being like, all right, like we get it. We're rounding into form. A lot of these guys that need to pull their weight when you get into the playoffs, they're playing at a high level right now. Instead, so you got this one where it's like, yeah, guys did well, but like there's overarching – looming threat it's like the moon coming down in like that zelda game it's like you can't ignore it because it's the biggest thing that's going to mess everything up like you the great odds any... looking over yes, exactly. everything you, you you can't view any of the 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 you know the positives or draw the silver linings out when a recurring flaw that can really bite you in the ass in the playoffs um as we've seen you know in the past if that's not being corrected um you know this is a, a stretch now and the middle of March where, again, these games, you're just trying to build your game towards the playoffs, what have you. If you lose, it's very frustrating. It's a, a, a tough look, but it's not middle, late April where a loss like that derails whatever momentum you have, and all of a sudden you're on the ropes with another, you know, uh, fortunate or unfortunate bounce sending you sending you home, right? Like the stakes aren't nearly as high as they are in the playoffs, but if you keep on taking your foot off the gas pedal, if you keep on letting kind of the net front defense collapse – critical situations it's going to crush you at the worst possible time it is and i think that's one of the big things um coming from that game there's another recurring theme small recurring theme in net from that game uh before we get to that though a quick word from our friends over at prize picks testing my skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports if you have the skills you can turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars with just a few Taps. Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. It's skill based, so if you watch a lot of hockey like I do, pick more or less the number of shots on goal. A player, a top player like Connor Bedard or Sidney Crosby might have in a game. So download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Now, back to the show. So uh, Jeremy Swayman uh, gives up five goals in the win. Um, it's a second straight game giving up five goals. Uh, the previous one was that 5-1 loss to St. Louis, which was a big um, last week. Uh, so again, two straight games with uh, with five goals against. And I, I before we came on, I saw uh, Felger and Holly were talking on NBC about how uh, this is because they do the platoon, that they can't get Swayman in a rhythm. And what I would say is, well, Swayman was in quite the rhythm early in the season and midway through the season doing this exact same thing. Um, you know, I think it's the ebbs and the flows of the season and Jeremy Swayman has been the better goalie all year. We know that. Um, but do you think there's a chance with the way olmark has been playing and kind of the anxiety gone from not getting traded? Um, is there a chance that Olmark uh, works his way into potentially being the game one starter for the postseason? Yeah, I mean, it would be the same exact thing we saw, what, in 2021-22 that year, right? Because, like, Swayman had that stretch in the middle of the year. We've seen it a couple times now where you get into kind of like the dog days of, you know, the post-holiday break where Swayman's traditionally gone on like a complete heater for a couple of weeks, and then, you know, he hits a wall a little bit there. And, again, that's not to say this is a recurring flaw with Swayman. I, as you kind of said, it's – the ebbs and flows of a highly volatile position, right? Where it's so tough to get consistent play throughout an entire season. But 
this is why you have a, a guy in Allmark there to, you know, support your team and, and ease some of the, the burden or the workload off of a guy who's in a little bit of a rut right now. So, um, no, I wouldn't be surprised if Allmark, you know, uh, leapfrog Swayman in terms of, you know, who might get that game, those game one reps because he's been the better goalie. This is the whole point of the of the goalie rotation in this platoon is you roll it. You have the option of having a number one goalie in net uh, night in and night out. And whoever's playing the best at the right time gets the nod. And then you go from there. And again, I think that's the whole reason why they have these two guys in place, you know, having it be that swimming can't get into a rhythm. It's like, all right, well, I'd much rather be a situation where you have two guys that can step in when needed and put your team in the best position to win night in and night out, because it's crazy, Evan. In a sport like hockey, where it all eventually comes down to bounces, some puck luck, and a lot of stuff can go sideways in the playoffs, as we've seen multiple times before, maybe it's good to have as much insurance in the most possible, you know, in the most important position on the ice, as opposed to worrying like getting a guy into a rhythm or, or what the reps are. Maybe putting yourself in the best, best position to win every night is the most important thing. Crazy how that works. I will also say it's interesting um, with how Olmark does down the stretch. Uh, you know, you look at um, the last two years, Olmark has not been amazing in the playoffs, kind of ran out of gas. Last year um, was not particularly great um, against the Hurricanes uh, the year before. Uh, and I think a lot of people, myself included for most of the year, has wanted, hey, I want to see Swayman. See, I want to see what he can do early in a playoff series and when he's kind of given the, the starting job um, in game one and, and however it kind of rolls from there. Um, and I think there's kind of this misconception with the goalie tandem, or at least this is how I perceive it. A lot of people think it means they have to go like swim and Olmark, swim and Olmark, swim and Olmark, swim and Olmark forever in the playoffs. I don't think that's the case. Um, I, we've, we've talked about this a lot. I think we're going to talk about it a lot coming up as the playoffs get closer. But you can do... Swayman, Swayman, Olmark, you know, Swayman again, uh, and kind of decide from there and see if you want to go back and forth or see if you want to have Swayman go for maybe two or three games in a row and then go to Olmark. Like, I mean, you look at last year, right after game four, Bruins are up three, one in that series. And it's like, oh, why not try out Swayman in game five? Now would be kind of the time. Yeah. Keep Olmark fresh. Um, I think that's sort of how people want to see it. It's, it's not, you know, as I said, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Um, so I think that that's kind of a little bit of a misconception with the tandem, unless that's what they do, but I don't think that's what they're, I don't think that's what they're planning on doing completely. No, I mean, I, I feel like, again, it's going to take a lot of conviction just to stay with that somewhat kind of flexible schedule of maybe like two, two stats in a row and then go from there. But yeah, it's like, if you get to like game four, game five of a series and Omar has a 36 save shutout, I don't think it's like, well, Based on the the unchangeable, you know, the permanent etched in stone rules of a goalie rotation, we need to do we need to roll a Swayman. Like again, you looked at like last year when we talked about this. Like as you said, the Bruins are up three one. Maybe that's you know the the cushion you have to bring in Swayman, keep him fresh, give Allmark a little bit of a rest after Game Five where that Kachuk OT goal doesn't look great. The optics of that are pretty bad. Maybe that's a time to kind of stem the tide, change the momentum, and have a guy like. Um, Swayman in there, get a fresh goalie, change things up against the the Panthers, give them a different goalie to look at to to game plan for, give Omar a, a you know a stretch, it, a, a little bit of a rest as well. Like it's not like so set in stone in terms of the goalie rotation that you, this should be the way the Bruins are using it. It should be an advantage, one that should be flexible and best catered to again putting you in the best position to win every single night, and that's the most important thing. There we see how much momentum changes over the span of a a couple of days in the playoffs throughout a series. Like it's all about right then and right now in that spot, putting you in the best spot to succeed. And I think that's what the Bruins have to kind of stick with when in, ter in terms of handling this goalie rotation uh, this spring. I agree. Uh, let's dive into this a little bit more in a sec, but first a word from our friends over at Factor Meals. Let me tell you about my good friends over at Factor Meals. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including calorie smart, protein plus and keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. Two-minute meals, 
Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. Pancakes, smoothies, and more. If you're looking for fast premium options with no cooking required, sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So head to factormeals.com slash Bruins50 and use code Bruins50 to get 50% off. Again, that's code Bruins50 at factormeals.com slash Bruins50 to get 50% off. Now, back to the show. So people watching on YouTube might notice that I'm getting lower as the episode goes along. And that's because my office chair that I'm sitting in consistently is like deflating. Like it's literally like going like. If you're like, if you just like dropped completely and like the, 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 the chair broke, I would have to like immediately do this and have to leave the, I'd have to, I'd have to leave the show for a little bit. I would be, (laughs) I would be in shambles. Evan, I'd be more concerned for your well being, of course, but obviously obviously well it's fine you know it's interesting this it's how we are as people right like uh, i remember in college uh one of my friends um had a little bit to drink and uh it was you know i don't know can you believe that and uh he fell he was i don't know why i was filming but he was on the stairs and he just fell completely back and like tumbled and i was dying (laughs) i'll send you the video after we do this Uh, i was dying in the background and people were like how could you be like some people were like how, uh, you were laughing you weren't even i was like i wasn't worried that's, that's hilarious like yes come on so I, come on I, I, come I, on I people I, if i fell out of this chair and it just like <laughs> disintegrated i would ex- i would be laughing as well yes uh, we'd have to clip it too it'd be like the shortest all the people on the the channel on youtube be like why the hell is this video 14 seconds long and they'd be like oh this is great this is great. You're, yeah, it'd exactly be a 14 second to. video of Evan falling. All the comments, like, you guys aren't talking about the Bruins. <laughs> you guys never, you guys never talk about what we care about. Um, anyways, the fourth line. You want to talk about the fourth line over me falling out of a chair? You're more I than guess, welcome. To. I guess. Uh, we'll talk fourth line. Um, uh, uh, there's been a little bit of a dilemma this week because uh, you know, Beecher's been outstanding at draws kind of the best guy on the team he's the only guy that can take a face off um and he was at the wing uh, for some of the last couple practices um and montgomery said he wants beecher to take the draws and then boquist to kind of um move into the center role once the puck is uh, dropped and hopefully the face off is won for the bruins um i think there's a lot of things here and and the fourth line is kind of taking shape um the first thing is what do you think of that and then the second thing is what happens when pat maroon comes back yeah, I mean, that is probably the bigger question, I guess, working starting from the first part of that. I mean, I don't really have an issue in terms of if they think that they get the most out of Boquist is, you know, having him holding onto the puck uh, the most as the primary centerman. I could see why you, you bring in Beecher for the faceoffs, where obviously he's, I mean, only played a couple of games, but he's been a game changer in that regard, right? Of how good he's been, especially on those kind of critical yep. D zone draws. Um, and he's also, I think, been good all around. I mean, he scores, he gets that goal, but like he's been aggressive on the four check. I mean, he's got the skating ability and the size to really do some damage uh, when he's just kind of playing that straight line hockey that really complements his game. So he's playing like a guy who does not want to go back down to Providence, especially with the stretch no. run coming up here. But I don't really have an issue in terms of, of rolling with that, right? In terms of uh, Beecher being, you know, set for the faceoffs and then getting Boquist more of an opportunity to hold on to the puck where his speed comes in, you know, he's made some easy entries. He kind of set up with a good entry leading up to Beecher's goal as well. So I can see the, the, the benefits of doing that. But as you said, the biggest question is how it all comes together once Maroon comes back. And that's again, remains to be seen. He's still uh, Montgomery mentioned on Monday Maroon's still week to week. I don't believe he started skating yet. Um, again, you could say it's a good problem to have for the Bruins when it, when it comes to that. But when you look at, um, how good Beecher's been. I can't see a situation where if he keeps up this level of play again, if he hits another wall again or his play declines and that changes things. But if he's playing at this level, I can't see him being a guy that slots out of this lineup. No. And I just, even if he does kind of hit that wall that he hit the first time he was here, I still think winning draws is something that the other centermen are not as good at. And I think when the playoffs come around, you want a guy on the roster or you know on the bench they can go out and win a draw when you need it. And he's responsible defensively and, you know, to win a D zone draw. Um, 
So to me, like there's that. I think Boquist has been solid. I think the the way Boquist has played and the way he's uh, driven play and there's even been some production. Um, you know, I think that and then Brazo has been terrific uh, in his time there. And then you, you went out and traded for Pat Maroon, you a guy you want in the locker room, like all that stuff. Again, it's a good problem to have, but at the same time, I do think ideally you'd like to have Maroon back now and try to kind of finagle the fourth line together to see. I mean, again, Maroon and Brazo on the same line is that's a slow line. Um, so you have to kind of you you do have to 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 handle that. Um, but at the same time, that's a big physical line. And I, I think I said this to you, like could just be matchup based. You could just be going um uh, based right. uh, whomever the matchup is. Um, and that, that wild card spots changing in the East all the time. The capitals have moved in there. Uh, Bruins capitals. What do you think about that one? Uh, easy. I mean, I'd pick the Bruins. Um, I, I don't want to say, I, I almost said easy. It's not easy. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't fully, like, I got, you know, I don't think this Bruins team is the wagon they were last year. I don't think anything's going to be easy, but I remember like, you know, the Bruins have kind of owned the capitals in the playoffs. I mean, they, the only time they really played was that 2021 series. And that was what five games. Right. Um, so, you know, again, that was a couple of years ago, I know. Um, but I, that that cat, this Caps team, I don't. But I mean, I said the like, same thing with the Florida Panthers last yeah. year. So I don't like know Capitals, what I Capitals, who by some miracle, I think, are in this playoffs fun. I think they got like, what, a minus 30 goal differential? So I saw it. Was it, it be... Jay Fresh? Was it Jay yeah. Fresh who tweeted they're like 29th in goal differential, like the 29th yeah. of this, 30th in that? So it would not be good if the, uh, if the, I almost said the Patriots, if the Bruins would be not good at the, the <laughs> Patriots Bruins. Patriots won't be them. near the playoffs. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, no, they're working on another hit piece uh, documentary, but no, uh, it'd be very bad if the, if the Bruins uh, lost to a team like that. You're talking about Toronto and what we said about them. They're still a very talented team. A lot of these other matchups. The Islanders are in the wild card race, and that's a team that is very boring. Has <laughs> very good goaltending, can really upset a lot of teams in the playoffs. Uh, losing to this Capitals team that is in the middle of honestly like a an extended retool slash rebuild, that wouldn't be that great. That that would be a tough pill to swallow for this team. That would be bad. I agree with you. Um, but again, they're getting hot at the right time. They're like a Winchester. You never know. Except Winchester was a little bit better in the regular season than uh, than the Caps have been. Um, anyways, Connor, what can the people look forward to from you over at the Globe and Boston.com? Yeah, we're gonna have you covered uh, every step of the way this season as we get ready for the playoffs. So whether it's uh, you know recaps, features, columns, previews of the playoffs, lineup breakdowns, all that stuff, you can find it over at Boston.com and the Globe. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can at Connor Ryan underscore ninety three. Go do all that. That's Connor Ryan. I'm Evan Marinovsky, presented by our good friends over at Prize Picks. You Bruins beat listeners. Have a great rest of your week.